In this tutorial, we're exploring the app component, which is the default component created by a new React project. And then we're also going to explore JSX, what it is and what you can do within it. Let's start by looking at the index.js file that's created when we use Create React App. And we import our app from the app file because each component gets its own file. And here you can see that the app component is injected into the DOM and it's being injected into the element that has the ID of root. And that is the default when you create a React project. So let's look at this app component and we'll look at app.js. I'm going to go ahead and hide the file tree so we can see this a little bit better. And also point out that I have the default project running over here by using the npm start command at the command line. And so it's on the right. And as we make changes to this file, this will update the local dev server for React using npm start will make automatic updates as we change this file. So we could change some of the code here where it says save to see changes. I can just get rid of this and say save to see what I change and save the file and we should see the change over here on the right in the project. Okay, now looking at our app component, you can see it is also allowed to import resources and we're importing an image to use as a logo. We're also importing a CSS file that goes with the app component and it's app CSS. And then you'll notice the component is a function. Modern React uses functional components. There was a time that class components were used more often and that is not the case now. I do not plan to go back and cover class components in this tutorial series but you may see some legacy code with class components. There is also an export statement at the bottom that just has a default export for the component that you create. We can use this default component created by Create React App and just look at the app component to learn more about components before we create more. So let's take a quick look and you can see it starts out with the function keyword. This could be an arrow function. It shouldn't change anything. And when I create other components, I will probably use arrow functions. Now the return statement in the component returns JSX. And we'll talk about that more in a minute, which it's all JavaScript. But inside any function component we create, we can add more JavaScript. So I could define a variable up here called name and I could put my name in it and that's fine. And we can refer to this variable later inside the JSX. The JSX is JavaScript and it stands for JavaScript and XML. It resembles HTML very much, but it's not quite the same. You can see we can write HTML. Here's a div, here's a header element, here's an image element. But notice some of the attributes are different. We don't have a class attribute, that's reserved. So we have to use class name. Also, there are some others that you may encounter like instead of for and HTML for, but class name is a very common one. Other than that, some of the other attributes you see like the source attribute here, the href attribute, the target attribute, the rel attribute, those are just like they would be in HTML. And then JSX allows us to put JavaScript expressions in the code. And that's really what makes it so powerful. So here you can see, instead of a normal source value, we're referring to the logo variable that's pulled in from the lexical scope here of this component. And we have defined logo up here as it's imported. And it's pulled right into this image tag as the value for source. And then the image is displayed in the component. All in all, you could say JSX provides a template for the component layout. And also it is important to know that JSX renders data as text when it displays it. So if we provide a text string or an integer, for example, either type of data, it would be rendered as text. So let's look at an example of that. Here we have our header. Let me put a paragraph below the header. And inside the paragraph, we could just put a word like we would see in HTML. And here I'll just put HTML and we'll save that. 
and that will display, well, it looks like it displayed way below here. Let me go ahead and put it inside the header. I didn't change the default CSS. Let me put it right under the link to learn React. And now we should see it above. Here it says HTML, but that is simply HTML that we've put in there. But if we want an expression with a value, we could do something like that. And I could put Dave as a string. And now we can see we get Dave rendered to the page as a string. We could also change that and put in a numeric value, an integer, say the number one, and that will render as a string as well. We can also do that with arrays. So let's put in an array that counts, well, it has three elements, one, two, three, and you can see the array is also rendered as a string on the page, one, two, three. Now, if we removed the curly braces, which says, hey, that's a JavaScript expression, now, this is just back to HTML, and it's going to render exactly what is in there. And now you can see we get the brackets and everything. But once again, curly braces says this is a JavaScript expression. We cannot, however, display an object, and we will get an error when I do this, but let me go ahead and show you. I'll have A and then just B. Notice I've got double curly braces to say it's an object, but an error should pop up over here. I may need to refresh the page to see the error. Yes, there it is. Objects are not valid as a React child, so no objects. That cannot be rendered to the page. So just remember, we can't do that with objects like we can with arrays. Also, a Boolean will not render to the page. So let me go ahead and save this first. So we get rid of the error. Now we're back to our normal page. And of course, we rendered nothing there, but if I put in a statement like true strict equals false, normally that would return false, right? Or I could say one or two strict equals four. That would be false. But notice we're not getting false to the page because it will not render a Boolean. I'm going to put the variable name in here that we created above. And let's go ahead and save this. And yes, there's the value of the variable. So that JavaScript expression works just fine. Now I'm going to select all of this and in Visual Studio Code, I'm using Windows. If I press Shift, Alt, and A, I can comment something out. Notice how a comment is created. First, the curly braces are used to say, hey, this is a JavaScript expression. And then you, it uses comments as we would within JavaScript to comment this out. And if I save, it won't show up. So that is an extra step kind of in commenting out some code here in the JSX. But that is how Visual Studio Code does that. And then we can just delete this. I believe if I select it around, it's not going to do it right. Let me go ahead and try that. And I'm going to press Shift, Alt, and the letter A again. Oh, it did it. It got rid of it. So, hey, that's great. And Dave is back. All right, let's go ahead and remove this, and let's just change some of the template code here. We'll leave the logo, but let's create a basic hello world, like you might expect in a first project, and we'll, we'll change a couple of things around. We'll experiment with it just a little bit. So let's say first, hello world with an exclamation mark, and we can see the change over here, no problem. Now let's change this to say, instead of hello world like this, let's put in the name, get rid of that extra curly brace, and it says hello Dave. So we can put in expressions like that. Let's take this a step further and say we wanted to load a random name. So instead of defining a variable here, let's define a function and let's call this function handle name change. And you'll often find that functions are started with handle as a convention or something similar to that. However, in the future, we would be handling a click event or some other type of event. But here, I'll just name this handle name change so we get used to starting functions with the word handle as a convention. And I'll define names inside. And instead of just Dave, I'm going to have Bob, and I'll have single quotes Kevin, and then I'll go ahead and include Dave in there. And after we define our names array, 
let's define a random integer and we'll just call it int and we'll set it equal to math floor and we just want this to be from 0 to 2. So we're going to use math, not marth, there we go, math.random and we'll take it times 3. If we wanted it to be between 1 and 3, of course this is in my basic JavaScript course, but we would have to add 1 to this as well. So right now we have between 0 and 2 and a random number and then we're going to go ahead and return names and the element from names that matches up with our random number. So we're going to get a random name back. Now instead of putting name in here, we can put in handle name change and we can just go ahead and call the function right there. So when this loads, it will call the function handle name change into action. So let's save this change and we get hello Kevin. Now if we reload, we got hello Dave. Let's try it again. Hello Kevin. Maybe we'll get Bob sometime. Still going between Dave and Kevin right now. There's Bob. So it took just a little bit. One out of three chances there. 33%. 33.33 I guess if we're being specific. But the point being is you can call a function in here as it's also a JavaScript expression that we're inserting into the JSX. Hey, thank you guys so much for liking the video if it helped you get started with React. Also, I appreciate you watching and subscribing. It's helping my channel grow. Take care and I'll see you again very soon.